<coughs> well, we had our Christmas message this morning. So tonight we're going to be back in Phil, uh, Philippians chapter 3. This is an introduction, I guess, if you want to say, to next Sunday evening's message for the new year. And so uh, this is going to be a part one. And uh, yeah, Philippians chapter 3, we're going to begin in verse number 7. And we're going to read through verse 16, Philippians 7, or 3, verse 7. If you want to stand, I invite you to stand. Uh, to honor God in the reading of his word. Philippians 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any, uh, if any think ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal the, even this unto you. Nevertheless... Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that we have together this evening. Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come back this Christmas day, Lord, and to sing these songs, Lord, these Christmas songs, of these hymns, or about your birth and about uh, what Christmas means, or tonight as we are to the preaching and teaching a part of the service, Father, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus, saith the word of the Lord. And Father, uh, help us tonight as we uh, study uh, this scripture. Lord, I ask you to do these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. We've actually discussed a lot of this, what we've already read tonight. And it's kind of an introductory into next week. Uh, we're going to kind of rehash verses 7 through 10. And I want to speak on the subject, a, spir a, a spiritual mature attitude, part 1. A spiritually mature attitude, Part 1. The key in, the, in these scriptures is verse 8. And uh, I have some things here uh, talking about uh, verses 7 through 16, or 7 through 10. And the only way we get from se uh, verses 7 through 10 with Paul is if we understand what he told us in verse, verses 4 through 6 about where he came from. But the first thing I want us to look at is a spiritual mature attitude is nothing more than knowing Christ. Nothing is more than knowing Christ. That's what a, a mature spiritual attitude is. A, a mature believer with a spiritual attitude, nothing is more than knowing Christ. The question is, does our, our lives reflect nothing more than knowing Christ? Do our, our, do our lives reflect that question? Because that, that's the goal of every pastor, 
uh, in the world is to uh, preach and to bring folks to spiritual maturity, not just salvation. Yes, that's the main goal, reaching folks, but getting those folks mature in God's Word and to be a mature, a spiritually mature uh, believer. See, Paul's life and resume reflects this statement. If we look at verses 4 through 9, he was a mature, spiritual, a, a, a spiritual mature believer. Uh, he says in verse uh, 7, uh, what things that were gained to me, everything that was in his credit column, he put them in the loss column. We talked about this, the profit and loss of Paul and uh, what he considers profit and what he considers loss. The value of knowing Christ with Paul vastly surpasses everything that he will, uh, he has or will ever lose. That's what Paul's mentality was, that the value of knowing Christ surpassed anything that he has lost or that he will ever lose. And that's what he says in verse number 8. Yes, I count all things at, 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 but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss. What's those two words? All things. I mean, those things can include, uh, listen, he was a Pharisee, right, in Jerusalem, out going after uh, the church. He, he suffered the loss of his status in the community in Jerusalem. That was a loss for him, what uh, status and authority he had in Jerusalem. Not only that, he was willing to suffer the loss of even his Roman citizenship. Paul considered the value of knowing Christ surpasses anything else. And, th and studying this, this hit me hard. And one of my, the question was, Mark, uh, uh, is the Lord is asking me, Mark, would you be willing to give up your citizenship as a United States citizen for me? That's a hard, hard question to ask, to answer. Very hard. But yet the Lord asked me that, and I'm like, mm, I don't know. Paul said yes. Paul, he, he, the value that Paul put on knowing Christ higher than anything else. All, thing, uh, of, uh, all of the gains that Paul ca ha had before Christ, nothing is more than knowing Christ, what he says in verse 10. So a spiritual mature attitude is nothing is more or more important or placed the value on that is more than knowing Christ. That is the attitude of a spiritually mature believer. The second thing is a spiritually a spirit. Uh, spiritual mature or spiritual maturity reveals what we count as loss. Spiritual maturity reveals what we count as loss. What man thinks is important. Paul talked about this in in verses four through six. What man counts as in, uh, thinks is important. Religion and the religiosity that man thinks. Uh, commends them to God. We, there's a lot of religions out there that thinks that if they follow that religion, it's going to commend them to God. It's going to get them closer to God. Remember, this is the, the, the attitude of the Pharisees. They, they thought their self-righteousness would make them uh, uh, acceptable to God. Remember, we've discussed this in, in the weeks past. Well, uh, not much has changed today. Uh, the religion people being religious and their religiosity uh, will, condemn, will uh, commend them to God. But a spiritual mature believer counts those things as loss. The things a spiritual mature believer counts as loss, they know are a hindrance and a barrier between them and Christ. This is what Paul thought was a hindrance and even a barrier. Uh, what verses 4 through 6. The, uh, those are, it was a hindrance and a barrier to Christ. Why? Because he thought he was to follow the law and, and, be, and, and thought that the law was going to bring him righteous before God. And he says, no, those things were a hindrance and a barrier. And that's why we see uh, uh, those that rejected Christ, those Pharisees and those Jews that rejected Christ because the law, the religion, uh, the religion became that barrier and hindrance uh, between them and Christ. Paul and spiritual mature believers 
walk away from those losses. Hello? And that's including salvation. There's a lot of folks out there that are underneath the umbrella of Catholicism that are not willing to walk away for salvation from their religion. I was discipling a guy here years ago. He was a Catholic, a devout Catholic. On Wednesday nights, I was in that room over there. My brother Jim was in here, and I was discipling this guy. And he could not, uh, in order for him to, uh, to succumb to salvation and uh, under the authority of the Scriptures, he would have to basically say that, Dad, you're a liar. Because his dad was a devout uh, Catholic, died a Catholic, and he, he could not get past that. He could not come uh, to that part of the, that uh, in his life. So talking about spiritual mature believer, the question we must ask ourselves, what attitudes of spiritual, uh, of spiritual mature believer are we missing? What are those attitudes? Do, the main attitude is nothing comes before Christ. Nothing is greater than Christ. As Paul said, he, was, he counted everything. Absolutely everything lost for the excellency of knowing Christ. So what are the things in that spiritual mature attitude do we lack? What are we not willing to give up in knowing Christ? Well, you might say, well, I know Christ. I, I'm saved. No, we're, we're talking about that intimate knowledge of Christ growing deeper in Christ, not just salvation and not just maybe tiptoeing into the pool of knowledge, but actually jumping into uh, the deep end of knowing Christ and growing our faith. We, we, uh, what, must, uh, what must we need to do, we must, in order to mature the, in those areas, we must do what is necessary. The first thing we must do is seek the Lord. I, there's a lot of folks out there that say, well, I'm seeking the Lord. But they don't respond to the Lord. Actually, they do, and it's no. There's a lot of folks out there that say, well, I'm seeking the Lord on this issue. Well, has the Lord answered? If you were to ask them, a lot of them would say yes. Some of them will say no because they were going to refuse what the Lord has said. Listen, our relationship with Jesus is measured by our relationship with scriptures. Our relationship with the Lord can be measured, uh, 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 measured by our relationship with the scripture. How much we love the Lord is how much we love this word. There's a lot of, folk, a lot of believers out there that are underneath the, the umbrella of Christianity say, well, I love Jesus, I just don't love the Bible. Can't love Jesus if you don't love the Bible. We can't do it. So, uh, in Psalm 119, verses 25 through 29, this is what, he, this is what the psalmist said. Adeleth, My soul cleaveth unto dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Make me alive according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou hast heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand thy way, uh, the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth heaviness. Strength, strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. So as an introduction to uh, spirit, uh, attitudes of a spiritually mature believer. How is our how is our relationship with the Scripture? Because that's going to determine whether or not we're willing to give up everything for the excellency and the knowledge of Christ. If we love this, if this is the most important thing to us, then we're on the right track of being a spiritual mature believer that is the goal of, of pastors that is that's god's goal that's jesus's goal to mature you to get closer to you and i that is his goal what attitudes are we missing 
do we have the thought process as Paul? Well, well, Paul was a different, he was a different character, wasn't he? You might some say, well, he was a different breed. He was same, same human as you and I were, are, is he not? God doesn't make the human, he didn't make humans different in Paul's day as he did in our day, does he? No, we're still the same, we still have, listen, Paul had the same temptations you and I had. Maybe not to the extent as uh, maybe the availability. I mean, Paul had to go somewhere to see horrible things. We get to pull them up on our phones, right? Paul had they suffered the same temptations you and I did. He, in fact, it was worse because he was running for his life. Anybody here running from their, for their life? Running, and do you have anybody chasing you from? Town to town to cause trouble, to get you kicked out of town, to even try to kill you? Do you have an appointment before a federal judge or Caesar about the matter of preaching the gospel? We don't, do we? We are without excuse. The reason? We have no pressure. We have no pressure our attitude and spirit and being a becoming a spiritually mature believer is I need to love God's word so that I can love Jesus. That's the that's the reality of it. Our relationship with Jesus is measured by our relationship with the Bible. I know. Listen, I know it's hard to read. Flesh doesn't want to do it. Flesh does not want to do it. But we have to do it. Are you willing to begin that process? Are you willing to begin and asking and seeking God, will you help me to mature? Because we, every single person in here, we all need that help. There's not a single person I know that has it all together. Because Paul says, I, I, I have it attained. I'm pushing to maturity. That's what he's talking about in verses 11 through uh, 26 is I'm pushing, or 11 through 16, I'm pushing towards that maturity. I'm not there yet. If Paul says I haven't arrived there yet, the question was, is there any hope for me? Yes, if you have verse 8 attitude. That's the attitude we've got to have, verse 8. Are we willing to put everything as loss for knowing Christ? Well, let's pray. Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, I, I know this is a hard question to ask ourselves. Lord, it's a hard question to look in the mirror and ask, what am I willing to lose? To know you. To know Jesus. Lord, there's a, several things that comes in my mind that I don't want to lose. Or, but if I am going to mature spiritually as a believer, I have to have that attitude that all things are losses to me. To know you. Father, I pray for myself, Lord, that you would help me to be able to answer that question. What am I willing to lose? Lord, I pray for each individual here. Lord, that you would help us in that same question. Lord, it might be just as simple as starting. Well, I'm going to lose, I'm going to give up whatever it may be, time, uh, time on social media, time on uh, uh, watching television or watching sporting events or whatever it may be. Lord, help us to take that first step so that we would be able to have the same attitude as Paul that we're willing to give up all things for the excellency of Jesus. Lord, thank you. For the time that we have tonight, Lord, I pray that your word or the spirit has spoken.
by the preaching of your word to everyone here and those that will be watching or have been watching. Lord, and I ask that you would have your will and your way in the invitation. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.